eagle eyed amongst you will see this is about motorbikes, but not brand new motorbikes, it's more the after sales accessories market. We're at Eva Tech Performance and we're having a chat with Dan here. You've invested in your first sliding head machine, it sits an L32 Type 8 with LFE. We'll come to that in a minute, but can you just tell me a bit of background about the company and what you actually manufacture? Yeah, we specialise in aftermarket accessories for the high-end motorcycle market. We specialise in the tail tidies, crash protection, radiator guards, so some aesthetic parts and some uh, protective parts as well. Okay, so you've just bought this brand new fantastic machine, you know, £20,000 Ducati for example, but they want to, each, each person wants to spec it up as well. Yeah, so they, they might want a part that actually protects, say, their radiator guard. So we've got to try to make that as aesthetically pleasing as we can whilst being a protective part. So um, a, a part such as the actual radiator guard here, you would put that on the front. It would stop any stone or road debris actually uh, damaging the radiator and obviously cause an expensive problem. Okay, so that's um, fabricated. You did other parts, you're milling, for example, the, the um, indicator housing, is that, is that correct? Uh, yes, this, this part is actually an indicator stalk for a, uh, a, one of the tail tardies that we made. This is actually some five axis machining. Um, so, uh, uh, yes, yeah, this would sort of fit in with some other sheet metal parts and turn parts. Oh, okay. And these are going on performance bikes, so high quality, high precision, but they're also going around the world as well. Absolutely, yeah, we export a lot. We sell within the UK, but we, we export all over the world. Yeah. And again, reiterate, it's high quality precision parts. Now, the reason you, well, you bought this Citizen L32 Type 8 LFA, you get that right again. Yep. Tell me the story behind that. Well, on some of the heavier crash protection parts that we produce, we were having to um, buy in a lot of M10 and a lot of M12 cap head bolts. The, the problem with that is that they're bright zinc plated steel and the actual, the quality was inconsistent and the, the aesthetics of it was inconsistent as well. I think, great, well, if you could show, show us what you were getting previously, then that would be a great example. And uh, yeah, just, just so I can get an idea, one as well that you're manufacturing now, we'll come to it in a minute. So, yeah, so previous and now. Yeah, uh, th this isn't too bad a, a, a version of it, but it is still a steel bolt. Compared to the parts that this would be actually fitted to, it's not even in the same league as the quality side of things. Uh, and throwing that they could be quite inconsistent, then somebody would be getting a kit and thinking, I love the part, but the, the actual bolts aren't very nice. Yeah, and again, you're spending a lot of money on the bike, on the parts, you want to have it looking really, really good. Oh, oh, absolutely. You know, we wanted the bolts to be as good as anything else that we produce. Okay. So, you engaged Citizen, yep. Neil Vine from Citizen, started the project, and it, it wasn't, we're just going to buy the machine, you, you know, it took a while to actually make that decision, is that right? It did. Um, sliding neck technology, we knew that that was the way forward to producing a bolt, um, because it's quite a long part that uh, a typical turret machine wouldn't really be up to it without having to tail stock, which then causes time problems, so on, so on. So we knew that a sliding head machine had the capability to produce a bolt quite quickly and within the remit, timescale and cost-wise that we needed. Okay, so you've got, again, reiterate, L32 Type 8 LFB. Yeah. Why did you go this machine? We were close to buying an L20, but we needed the torque so that we could actually roll thread the threads on because um, uh, an L20 simply wouldn't have to torque, it meant we would have to screw cut. Okay. So with the, with the screw cutting as opposed to thread rolling, you're not getting that integrity, that strength, is that right? Yeah, the, effectively when you're roll threading, you're forging the thread on rather than actually cutting the thread. So there's no material removal and through the, in the threading process. Right, So and these are long parts here, I mean, eight, is that 20 mil bar? Um, we will be turning these out at 19.05, um, uh, but it will be cutting straight to finish. There's no roughing, there's no, there's no finishing. It is cutting straight to finish. Right, so that all, will all be done in one pass? Yes. Right, impressive stuff. So, thread rolling, LFE all the way down? Uh, yes, LFE is only on the main spindle, but the, if the primary cut is on the main spindle, then, uh, then the LFE really does kick in and allow you to take those big heavy cuts. Okay, and what sort of depth of cut, I mean, talking heavy cuts, what sort of depth of cut? Uh, it's, you can go up to six mil. Well, we've done up to six mil, but yeah, four, five mil in one go. Okay, and again, taking out operator intervention because you're not having to polish it or anything like that afterwards? No, it's absolutely exquisite, straight off the machine. Yeah. Now, the actual components themselves, well, let's talk about the, the machine itself, what you've got in here and the controls and things like that. What, what did actually, what does Citizen actually supply you? Uh, well, this particular machine, we did spec it up slightly. It's a Type 8, but we did put a B-axis on it because we knew that there were certain jobs outside of the bolts where that would be quite desirable. Um, 
we also spec this machine up to uh, 38 ball. The typically there were 32, um, but we wanted it. Uh, we, we knew that we were going to need 38 mil at some point, um, but that would be in non guybrush mode. Right. Okay. So it's giving you that flexibility. So at the moment, it, you're in a great position. You produce, you've got these parts that need producing, so you've already got that demand there. But this gives you more flexibility then. It's, it gives us more flexibility over an absolute standard machine, but it possibly we overspect it because it's our first slide in head. So um, some of the things we haven't utilised fully yet. Right. And also in terms of controls, so Mitsubishi controls? Yeah, it's a Mitsubishi control. Um, it's, it obviously helps to optimise the machine. It's a very quick control. It complements the machine very well. Okay. Now, fantastic. I mean, the machine, you put it through its paces, but just talk me through this component because, I mean, that's a long part. What, do you have problems with concentricity, for example? No, no. This, the sliding head technology means that you maintain um, the actual accuracy of the part all the way along. It's, it is extremely accurate and very consistent. We're, we're making up to about a 200 mil bolt at the moment. Oh, right. And, you know, th this stands out completely separately from the old... So you, you can have a whole suite of bolts and they all look essentially the same. So they're giving you that um, re accuracy repeatability, really. Uh, yeah, very much so. The actual program for the thread and for the head is exactly the same. It's only an extension for the shank right. that really gives you the variation in the bolt lengths. Okay. Now also, I noticed here, you've upgraded from the previous bolt, you've got a bit of etching on there. Yeah, one of the things it did give us that we never had previously was it, it gave us the ability to put our logo on the actual heads. It's not an absolute necessity, but it is aesthetically, it, it raises the quality of the bolt again. Absolutely. Now also, you mentioned that you're doing this in well, one, two passes, so is there any problem with a mismatch on this? Um, yeah, prior, at the very beginning, you would actually turn the part that needs roll thread in, yeah. and then you would re-engage the actual shank at the point where you'd left off and then carry the actual cut on. That, there's, there's no issue with that at all. The, the, when it re-engages the part, it is perfect. Now, also, just to, just to reiterate, thread rolling on this, because I wasn't aware you could actually do the thread rolling on, on this, and I'm thinking you just a, a, a separate thread rolling machine, but this is absolutely perfect for it? It's absolutely perfect, yeah, it works a treat. Okay. Yeah. Any other reasons why you bought this machine? Uh, the LFV was a big deal. Okay. The, um, the, the sort of the chip break strategy that it brings was actually, it surpassed our expectations. It really does uh, chip the stainless steel exceptionally well. Whereas typically you would see a lot of bird nesting, you would see a lot of stringy swarf, which gives you problems with the condensing it in your scrap bins. It gives you a problem with bird nesting around tools. The, it just gets rid of all of that. Okay. And as we know, the LFB is unique, and it's not just a macro per se, it's about the whole machine, is that right? It is, it's a mechanical process rather than a, um, a software-based one. Um, and it is, yeah, it's proved to be outstanding. Okay, so in terms of what you've, I mean, any other points about this machine that you like? Um, yeah, it's a very powerful, very, um, quite a dynamic machine for the footprint. It's, yeah. you know, it's a very small, it's quite a, you know, a good looking machine. There you go. Dan, absolutely fantastic endorsement of that and also EvoTech as well. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.